please welcome Professor Robert Carey, who's going to speak to you today. So uh, we've lost a bit of time, but um, I think we're, gonna, we're allowed a few more minutes at the end, so we'll see how we go. I'm sure plenty of people will keep coming in, and that's fine. Except, of course, all the spaces are on that side of the room now, so you've got to walk right around. And I'll go around the front. Though. No problem for me. Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk about three questions, and I hope there'll be time for interruptions and uh, thoughts from other people, challenges and discussion as we go, but uh, we'll have to see how the time goes. Um, reclaiming our profession, I, th I thought the discussion, the bits of it that I heard um, just now were really interesting and a whole series of issues there, and how do we get um, teaching to feel like it's, uh, a profession that's in control of itself, that's, that's leading the agenda? I think that's, that's, that's at the heart of what I want to talk about. And I think the way to do that is to be really clear about the whole improvement agenda, that, that what matters is getting better at what we do. That doesn't imply that, what, that we think what's happening at the moment isn't good, because however good you are, you can be better. And that that's the way to get credibility back, that's the way to, to get control of the agenda, to really push on this excellence of our practice. And that, obviously, everyone's going to agree with that. I'm, I'm sure no one, no one will think that's a bad idea. The problem is, what does it mean? What, what do we mean by being better in the first place? Can we agree on that or can we get some way forward on that? Because um, I think that's a big stumbling block for us. And then if we could agree, would we know how to get there or, or would we know if we have? And again, real challenges there, I think. Am I okay if I move away from the microphone? Is it, you can still hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. And the filming, is that all right if I move? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what does better teaching look like? And if you are a teacher, I assume everyone's here as a teacher, are they? Apart from the no. All right. All right, one journalist. Yeah. Everyone else is a teacher. Okay, and a few odd thoughts. Um, obviously, you want to be a better teacher, but do you know, if you sat here now thinking, right, what, what's the main thing for me to be a better teacher? What do I have to do? And um, if you did know that, Maybe you do, or maybe you think you do. How would you know? Do you know what you have to do to be better at that? And if you did do that, do you know whether it would have worked or not? And, and in fact, can you actually do that? And I'm not sure, certainly if I think back to the time when I was a teacher, uh, I think the answer that I would have given to that would have been, certainly in the, in the first few years, it would have all have been about classroom management and behaviour. I wouldn't even have thought anything else arose, because that was the big thing for me. Um, whether that was really the most important thing I should have been doing, I don't know, actually. What, from what I know now, I wonder if that's the case. And did I know what to do about it? Well, absolutely not. I had no idea, other than just survive and hope that it got better, and it sort of did. So that isn't really very strategic, and I, well, maybe your experience is better than that, but um, obviously danger of generalising. So as teachers, as a profession, we're supposed to have these professional standards. I'm sure people recognise the one on the left there. You know and love this, work it every day, and your pay depends on it, so you know it's pretty important. Uh, what about these others? The, that top one is from Scotland. Anybody seen that? Nobody here is from Scotland, I assume. This is meant to be the northern rocks, but okay, that's like up to the border, I suppose. Having to come 100 miles south, you know, that feels like, okay. Um, this one is the Danielson framework. Anybody heard of the Danielson framework? Yes. Great, good. And you've read it, I assume? Um, I've read bits of it. Okay. I think this is the nearest thing that I know of that's out there that is actually a sensible guide to what quality teaching looks like. I don't know, do, would you agree with that? Uh, yes, I would. It's the basis for my dissertation at the moment. Excellent. <laughs> right, I'm sure it'll be exemplary. Um, it, because, what's wrong with the others? What's wrong with them is that they're vague and uh, they're not evidence-based. Apart from that, they're great. <laughs> um, so this is, this is the headlines in the Danielson framework. There are four broad areas 
defined of what constitutes teaching quality. By the way, these slides, if anyone doesn't follow me on Twitter, can that be possible? Um, I did tweet, my last tweet last night uh, was a link to a website where you can get this PowerPoint from. So if you're not following Prof Co, have a look, see what my last tweet was, and you'll get the slides there. I'm sure you'll get them some other way anyway, do you? You got them right. Um, so, yeah, four broad areas and within those sub-areas. And what's, two things are really important about this. So one is it absolutely is based on evidence about what we know about effectiveness. And the evidence we've got is quite limited. Let's not pretend it's perfect, but it's a place to start. Uh, and the second thing is that all of these are operationalizable. In other words, there are procedures laid down for how you know whether you've uh, what level you're at, so they all have different stages of, of kind of unsatisfactory to proficient to you know higher and so on. I can't remember the categories, but they define different um, levels of performance for each of these. Obviously, I'm not going to talk in detail about that, but the document there is freely available. You have to um, give an email address, but you can just have it for free on that website. And it's, I would say, it's quite long, but it's it's better than anything that's been produced in this country, I think including Scotland. Um, yeah, so what, what should we have? Uh, you know, professional standards are pretty important. What should we have? Uh, based on evidence, some notion about diversity. Not every <coughs> teacher's needs are the same. When you start teaching, you know, the classroom management stuff, that's the key thing. But it, is, it shouldn't be. After two, three years, you should be moving on and thinking about pedagogy and instruction. And that's the thing that never happened in my teaching career. You know, the classroom management, the big focus on that, lots of support for getting that right. And then how to actually teach stuff so that kids will learn it. Hmm, well, good luck with that. You know, there was no help there. And that's actually far more important. So diversity and, of course, different uh, ages of children, different types of schools and so on. The needs may well be different. Let's recognize that. And then this last thing, yeah, we've got to know whether, you know, vague things like, um, you know, good relationships with students or a, um, a good use of, of feedback to, to um, support learning. Well, how, how does that help me? It doesn't, because I don't know whether I've done it or not. And I need to know that for this to be helpful. Yeah, so that's the, the variation, different types of teachers, different types of schools and so on. I'm rushing through this a little bit because um, uh, time's been shortened a bit, and also it'd be good to get some discussion going. So, if we were, and I mentioned the evidence, and I said the Danielson one is, is based on pretty good evidence, I think, and a good review of that evidence. There are different sources of evidence that we might look to here. Uh, the first of those is the kind of school effectiveness literature, which I've been quite critical of in the past, and I'm still critical of, but I think there is some knowledge there about some kinds of uh, characteristics of teaching, some kinds of behaviours that are linked with effectiveness, related to effectiveness. Whether they're causally linked, whether they're things we can change, that's another question, but I think there are links there. So we ought to look at that literature. Some of that's really useful. Um, I think the, um, if people are interested in that literature, the uh, Kramers and Kira Kiddies dynamic model is, the, is a good place to start there. Uh, happy to send references if anyone you know, really is that interested. Uh, then there's a second body of literature about things that, what can we change? In other words, in, interventions that can be put into schools or that teachers can take on and when we see the impact of those. And that's the toolkit stuff, the Sutton Trust EDM toolkit or, or John Hattie's work, those kind of things. So we know that when teachers use effect, uh, assessment effectively, good feedback, that makes a difference to what children learn and therefore professional standards should say something about assessment because we know that promoting that, encouraging that, can make a difference to how, um, how successfully children learn. And then there's a whole lot of series of theories that I think we probably should look at as well. Some of these from psychology, uh, about how children learn, or how people learn in general, about um, different aspects of pedagogy, about how, how you change behavior. You know, if you want teachers who are doing one thing to start stop doing that maybe, or, or do that better, or change the way they behave, uh, just telling them doesn't work, we know that, it doesn't stop us doing it, of course, but uh, how do you change behaviour? So things like the um, you know, nudge, I don't know if people have read that, that kind of thing, behaviour insights. Um, 
but crucially, at the bottom of all this, is that really the best we get from any of that evidence, I think, is a set of hypotheses about what might be a, a good way to go with this. And what all the time we need to be checking those hypotheses against, do they actually bring about improvement? And if they don't, okay, we'll do something more sensible. And if they do, great, we've got something we can, we can latch on to. Because they may or may not, the evidence may say that good teachers use, effect, use assessment, but you try and get them doing assessment and it doesn't make any difference, well, that's not, not so productive. Then. You know, if there's stuff about behaviour that you can get them to do and that really does make a difference, well, then we, we need to focus on that. I don't know, people might disagree with that. Okay, so this is one, one piece of that evidence. This is from the, uh, the toolkit. I, I, every talk I've given since uh, I and, and other colleagues at Durham uh, first wrote this toolkit for the Sutton Trust, I, I always use this slide, so I have to use it. Um, and this is the kind of summary evidence. I'm sure that people have seen the Sutton Trust a year toolkit. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, okay, so that's it basically in a single slide. Uh, cost. <coughs> Not working. Cost on the bottom, uh, effectiveness on the on the vertical. So uh, top left is is high impact for low cost. Bottom right is uh, high cost and relatively low impact. Maybe not worth it. Or may yeah. So okay. But it's not as simple as that. That's the key message for that. Um, I mean, mostly that that if I give a talk with that in, I say I always do. I can't quite bear to leave it out now. <laughs> and it quite often stop the talk there because people want to ask or sometimes argue about bits that are in there. I can see them. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Um, let's come back to that maybe if there's time and hold those questions. Um, because here, I've been trying to think quite hard and actually uh, working with John who's here and John's talking later not to be missed, um, John Thompson, uh, about how, why is this important to a teacher to know that stuff? So here's my uh, first stab at why that might be. 